everyone looks to me to make things happen. Hey, take my money. I know you're going to go handle it because you always handle everything. And it's just tough sometimes. You're only given that weight because you have the strength to carry it. And when your path is more difficult and challenging than everyone else around you, it's because you're supposed to be greater than everyone else around you. I'm here today with another fellow human being, Mr. Mike Wilson, Go Abundance member. Have an amazing day. I believe he's got some good news today. It's great to connect with you today, Mike. How are you? Likewise, Jason. Thank you for having me. I'm doing quite fantastic. Awesome. Well, tell me, why, why are you doing fantastic? So uh, about 20 minutes ago, I put in uh, a few days ago, I put in an offer to lease a commercial spot. I own the number one Thai restaurant in South DFW. And my offer to lease got accepted. So we will be expanding into my hometown market of Midlothian, Texas. Congratulations. Thank you very much. So, you know, I've met you before, but no one else has. Tell me a little bit about, give me a quick, what do you do? Who are you? Where are you from? I was born and raised in Hollywood, Florida, just north of Miami. Um, kind of a poor single mom type story, of grit and resilience, um, kind of definitely not affluent, um, struggled to pay bills, no dad in the household, um, did the typical schooling thing, average 2.5 student, uh, slept through half of my classes, uh, struggled through college, enlisted in the Air Force um, in 1999, was active and reserved for 20 years, and I retired in 2019. I've been a law enforcement officer for 25 years. Um, and actually next week is my last day in law enforcement. So I'm retiring next Thursday. Um, that's part of one of the reasons why I wanted your assistance. Cause I'm struggling with a lot of that, um, in my brain. And on the side, I've been reading lots of books about mindset, investing, coaching, all that kind of stuff. Um, obviously the rich dad, poor dad set me on a different path. I started investing in real estate. So I'm a real estate investor. And then I just started stacking some wins and opportunities have been coming my way and um, following down that path of entrepreneurship um, at 46 retired from military and policing. Okay. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your situation. So what do you want coaching on? So, and again, after reading your wonderful book and several other books that have helped me grow my mindset in a, in a certain way. I just feel like my body is not adapting well to my entire life, being told what to do, where to go, when to be there, consequences for your actions. And over the last few months, I've been having pretty graphic nightmares about it, actually. And I'm excited, but at the same time, my safety net's going to be gone. I'm going to have no more steady W-2 income uh, other than 35% pension type thing. Um, and I have a lovely wife with two teenagers and a seven-year-old. And I'm trying to navigate all of the, these stressors. I have a capital event coming up with access to my funds. I have a lot of investment opportunities. Like I'm just, I feel overwhelmed. And I often revert back to these childhood limiting beliefs that I can't accomplish things that I really want to accomplish. Interesting. Well, thank you for sharing. So are you married? Yes, I'm married um, to my lovely wife, Pamela. I have an uh, almost 19 year old son, a 17 year old son and a seven year old daughter. Okay. So what specifically do you want coaching on? Because you also shared your situation again, right? You said that there's you're going through a period of a, a major life transition because you're 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 completing your law enforcement career. You're beginning your career as a real estate investor. It sounds like you've also been an entrepreneur as well. And you've been having some physiological response in your body and in your mind. Correct. Um how can I help? I guess it's just so murky in my head. I don't, I don't have clarity of vision and path. And 
I mean, of course, the easy answer is I want an expert like you to tell me what to do. Um, but if you can help me get some of the messy stuff going on in my head out of there and give me some confidence to know that I'm making the right decision going forward for what's best for me and my family, um, you know, challenging myself and not taking the easy path and just sitting sitting around going fishing every day. Okay. So let's look at this from two points of view. Okay. So number one, there's the logistics of the situation. And number two, there's the mindset of the situation. Okay. Right. What is your monthly overhead expenses? Um, sadly, with Amazon, it's gargantuan. Um, well, what it is, uh, no judgment. Just what is it currently? It's probably... Twenty thousand a month. Okay, that's not. That's nothing. That's not the, It's just zeros, right? So, okay. And what's your monthly? Do you have pension with retirement? Are you getting a monthly income? Like, what's that? My my pension is sixteen hundred or so. Um, I have the real estate investments. They bring in a, a positive cash flow of about four thousand. The restaurant brings in about ten thousand net profit. Um, I have some stocks in crypto that pay some dividends, so let's say another two thousand a month. Okay. Um, I have a big four hundred one k that I don't know what to do with yet. Um, okay. So, so you've got so you've got cash in four hundred one k. Correct. How much cash in four hundred one k? Um, 250,000. Okay. And how much does Pam work? She does. She's a manager at Alcon Labs, the uh, big eye care company that does mm -hmm. contact lenses. Um, and she makes about, um, a hundred thousand gross. She's about, okay. So she's about seven or something a month. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. How much do you have in savings? 70,000 liquid now. And then when I retire and if, Whenever that payout comes, I'll have another seventy five thousand liquid, and then obviously access to the four hundred one k if I want to take the penalty. So basically, what it sounds like is your monthly gross income is roughly thirty ish, and then after, and if you're paying a hundred k, if your if your W two is you know a hundred k plus four hundred one k and that stuff, you're clearing what like six, maybe seven. Correct. So it's probably so your so your income is going to drop around six k a month or six or seven a month. So you're basically at around 24, 25 a month after that. And you've got 150, about 150 in savings. Also 250, but that's 401k. We don't want to touch that, but you do have that cash. Have you done that math before? I do it regularly. Um, okay. And it still scares me because I'm an investing guy. So I look at opportunities and I don't think about like, <laughs> I was doing investments while I had the steady W-2 and those were yeah. two separate channels of money. And now yeah. I'm depending on myself to make sure everything works properly or else, you know, the bills don't get all the way paid. Yeah. Understood. So let's say, would you say next month you're retiring? Was it next month? Next week. Next week. What, how much additional income can you generate in the next six months now that you're not working full time? Zero? Zero? I mean, why well, are you going to do more? like, is that, well, that's just a question. Like, if you, if you focused on real estate or a restaurant or additional new businesses in the next six months, how much additional cash could you generate not working full time? I mean, I think that's part of my problem. I can take the safe route and buy a house or two in cash and replace my income and be better than often I was in the past. Okay. Um, with the restaurant, I'd have to put up a couple hundred thousand with zero income for six months. And then I would imagine that would profit about seven to 10,000 a month as well with okay. location number two. Okay. So what do you want? 
my heart, my passion, my fire is to get this second restaurant going. Okay. And everyone around me has that same, when I talk to them about it, they feel my energy. They feel my yeah. passion. They're like, oh, you're going to go do this. I can't wait to see you skyrocket going forward. Okay. I want to be a part of it. I want to invest with you, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Awesome. So are you going to do that? Yes. Okay. I mean, so that, that's, that's what that's I want to do. Okay. So that you, you, you've made that decision. I know today you got the approval, but you've made the decision today. You've already decided you're going to do it. Correct. Okay. So what's the problem? It's scary. Okay. Jason, it's real scary. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, it is scary. I'm sure it also is also scary being a police officer at times. I've had some moments. Yeah. It's a different kind of scary though, isn't it? Are you familiar with the book, The Art of the Impossible? No. So it, it talks a lot about the neurochemistry that happens and the physiological responses to dopamine, stress, cortisol, all the things that are happening in your brain. Um, you get the adrenaline, you get the dopamine. And even though it's negative, like I've walked into rooms where I expected people to have guns and you're on a adrenaline spike for hours and hours and hours and you can't come down from it. Um, I would say that me going out on a venture like this and potentially taking a half a million dollars from other people that believe in me is a similar type of feeling. Okay. Great awareness. Thank you. Okay. So you're, 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 you're marching into the unknown. Known targets are easy. Unknown targets. And you've read my book. So remember, known targets are what you know how to do. Unknown is what you don't know how to do. All the magic comes from the unknown. And when we go into the unknown, if we're not careful, we can get ourselves out of alignment because a lot of times we're operating in a new direction where at the micro level, we may not know exactly what to do. Hey, I don't, I, I don't know how the restaurant is going to go. But at the macro level, you could also believe that, well, whatever happens, I'm going to make it work, right? But what happens a lot of times when entrepreneurs are going into the unknown in a new venture, they're not consciously aware of that. And if I asked most of them like you, do you believe that you could be successful in that restaurant? You'd say yes. Absolutely. But right now in the interim, at the micro level, there's uncertainty. Does that make sense? That's so exactly we have to right. be careful that the uncertainty at the micro level isn't creeping into the macro level. Because okay. when we're not, so it just takes a second to set that macro frame. Oh yeah, I'm going to be successful. Try this out loud. I'm going to be successful as with the restaurant. I'm going to be successful with the restaurant. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. Because I'm not going to stop until I do. How's that feel? It feels like a weight, a slight weight has been taken off me. Take a deep breath. Breathe. That helps shift. And you are leveling up. You are shifting frequencies. You are transitioning. And we feel that in our bodies. Now, you've practiced managing that as an enforcement officer because you did it for a couple of decades. As an entrepreneur, it's new. So let's also remember that those feelings is just the feeling of you growing. Okay. Now, if you were coming to me saying, I'm leaving the job, I hate it. I've got zero savings. I think I can make this or other restaurant work because my other one, I, I think I can make it work. It's not cash. Like if you came to me that, I would be like, stop. Like that's, you're not making, but you're coming to me in a grounded place with a lot of financial intelligence, you made a lot of smart decisions in your career. You've got a strong base. You've got a strong track record of experience. You've got people around you who believe you, who are offering to invest in you. Like, own that. Own that. You created that. You did. And you've got teenagers. I get my first teenager next week. Um, congratulations. <laughs> I hope you're ready. I got three more. <laughs> so, and, and, and all boys, 
Oh, boys, wait till you get the call that your son threw a bunch of hot dogs into a community pool and you're (laughs) you're a police officer. You'll get that call. That's funny. (laughs) On the outside. How are you feeling now? I feel empowered. Like, and I've heard you on your podcast before, like a lot of the people that you coach, they have a problem taking action. And I don't have that problem. My wife tells me, that's a different kind of problem because I never stop taking action. I always think I can turn everything into something huge. My and like, I, and I think my <clears throat> my childhood of being a you know a poor Puerto Rican kid that was eating ketchup sandwiches. I've always wanted success and wealth in my life, and I've always been drawn toward learning books, experience, and you know I always felt like I was failing because I wasn't as successful as I wanted to be. And then reading your book and some other books that, that I've read and, and audio books that I've listened to, it's like, you're supposed to fail. That's part of the journey. That's how you become more resilient and better at everything you attempt to do. And so, like you said, own it. I'm going to be successful. I don't care if I have to go back there and cook the noodles myself. I will make this work. And then I'll reframe the goalpost and find a bigger goal. Exactly. And, and the awareness as far as the type of coaching, like you're in a different phase of the cycle. Newer entrepreneurs typically struggle with taking action. When you get to the higher level of more success where action isn't a question, it's really alignment, decision, right decision. That's where the mindset alignment actually starts to become a lot more subtle because all I did was just point out one simple thing and notice how quickly you, you shifted and, and you're still probably integrating right now because it's a shift and then it takes a few moments. So that's why you're starting to feel better and better. So what I would encourage you to do in the future is the next time you feel that comfort zone being stretched, be present with the feeling like stop. Oh, I'm feeling stressed right now. And then you'll start to integrate it because when you stop moving and you're fully present, you actually automatically get into alignment. But as entrepreneurs, we're constantly running, chasing, running, chasing, running, chasing, and we don't realize we're pointed in the wrong direction. So as long as you stop every now and then you'll always write yourself up. Okay. Does this help? It does help. Awesome. What's the name of that restaurant so we can plug it for you? So it's called Blue Mint Thai and Asian Asian Cuisine in Mansfield, Texas. Got it. And soon to Midlothian, Texas. That sounds awesome. Sounds awesome. Fantastic. So are you good? I mean, I'm good, yes. But I, I just still have that. Okay. Still what? Dealing with the stress of the weight of the situations. And, you know, I've been, I do the workouts and I do the stuff to try to like help my body through some of the stressful stuff, try to get a good night's sleep and all that kind of thing. But, um, I'm good. I'm going to be successful. I know it in my core, in my heart. I just might need a few minutes to do some breathing exercises. Well, when you say the weight of the situation, the stress of the weight of the situation, what does that mean? Like, what is the weight? What is the stress? I feel like everyone looks to me to make things happen. Hey, take my money. I know you're going to go handle it because you always handle everything. And sometimes I just want a mentor myself to be like, oh, hey, Mike, I've done this a seven, seven, you know, like do this and do this and do this. And then it clears up everything. But instead, I keep moving forward and see a bunch of trees and I'm bumping into them. And then I, I find success. But I feel like when I hear other stories of, podcasts and books it's like oh or their dad was an entrepreneur and showed them exactly what to do and now they're worth a hundred million dollars oh that was nice you know 
It's just tough sometimes. That's not, yeah, it is tough. That's not your path though. That's not my path. My path is tough as well. It is tough. I have a hard time finding people that can coach me. <laughs> um, but you're not, you're only given that weight because you have the strength to carry it. I like that. That's good. And when your path is more difficult and challenging than everyone else around you, it's because you're supposed to be greater than everyone else around you. You're a good coach, Jason. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll reframe that a little bit. You have that weight because you can carry it. Yours is a challenge because, because without this type of challenge, you'd stop growing. That's right. You're such a badass that you have to be throwing all these things at you. And then one thing I've learned with investing, it's no fun losing somebody's money. But at the same time, it is an investment. They chose to give it to you. You, of course, will do everything in your power to save it. But if a tornado comes through, you can't, you've got no control over that, right? You know, sure. so, so I would also sure. encourage you to we go through some form of thought process around other people's money so that you're aligned. Okay. Instead, instead of, cause we don't want you acting out of fear. We want you balanced and grounded. And, okay. you know, we appreciate the investors, but you know, every investment is not a, a home run. Sometimes they lose. So the only thing you can do is do everything in your power to make it win. Okay. It's going to win. Yeah. And See? again, my vivid vision is up here on the wall behind me. And I'm going to have at least 10 of these restaurants all throughout DFW, probably a Cowboy Stadium, probably a Ranger Stadium. I'm going to be very well integrated into the communities, charity organizations, like that's all written down. And this is the first step to that. Excellent. And I believe that. Yeah. Thank you. I do too. So are you good? I'm good. Excellent. Well, great to connect that's today. Great. That's great stuff, man. Awesome. And I will talk to you soon. All right. I appreciate you, Jason. Likewise. Thanks for watching the Mindset Alignment Coaching Podcast. I'm Jason Drees. To get your own experience of coaching, go to freeintrosession.com and my team will hook you up and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care. Bye-bye. 